Hello, everyone. Welcome to the PEFC webinar that will introduce the European Union's new deforestation regulation, or most famously known as the EUDR, and the role that PEFC can play in this field. My name is Siti Shaliza Mustafa, and I'm the new Deputy Secretary General or Chief Operating Officer of PEFC. For those of you who are not familiar with PFC, we are the program for the endorsement of forest certification, an international not-for-profit organization dedicated to promoting sustainable forest management through independent third-party certification. Present in 55 countries globally, PEFC is an international standard-setting umbrella organization that provides independent assessment, endorsement, and recognition of national forest certification systems. It is estimated that nearly three quarters of all certified forests globally are certified to PEFC, and one third of all chain of custody globally have achieved PEFC chain of custody certification. With more than 24 years of experience, PFC today is the largest forest certification system in the world and continues to be the system of choice for smallholders. Ladies and gentlemen, climate change remains a major threat to the planet and halting deforestation of the world's forests is seen as an important solution to the global crisis. Protection of the world's forests is also seen as a solution um, to halt biodiversity loss and maintenance of ecosystem services. At the same time, the forest is also an important pr producer of alternative nature-based products that contribute to sustainable and renewable material for circular economy, which is also seen as a solution to combat climate change. We all therefore share a common objective to promote sustainable forest management and supply chains that achieve high sustainability standards. Towards this end, we need to employ multiple tools to achieve positive effects of forest use and jointly work together to further forest education and dissemination of credible information to support our joint efforts. Today, you will hear from my colleagues about, your, about the European Union's deforestation deforestation regulation and its implication. Most importantly, we will share with you how well PFC is aligned with the EUDR and observations on what impacts initiatives like the EUDR can have on the ground. Finally, we will open the floor for the Q&A session and participants are invited to submit your questions and comments during the presentations. We appreciate your availability to join us today and we would like to stay in touch throughout the next phases of the EUDR and its gradual rollout. Thank you. I now give the floor to Hannah. Welcome to our latest PEFC webinar addressing the new European Union regulation on deforestation-free supply chains, or as we'll call it from now on, the deforestation regulation. This new EU regulation aims to fight global deforestation on forest degradation driven by EU production and consumption. I'm Hannah, Communications Manager at PFC International, and I'm joined today by Maya, our PFC EU representative, Torsten, our Head of Communications, and Richard, our PFC Southeast Asia Manager. We are here to find out how far PEFC is already aligned with the deforestation regulation and what are the next steps so that companies can derive benefits from their PEFC certificate. To get us started, Maya, can you br briefly tell us about the deforestation regulation, what are its objectives and also what does it entail? Thank you, Hannah. So the new EU regulation is targeting commodities and products associated with deforestation and forest degradation that are made available on the EU market or exported from the EU market. It addresses a set of key goods, timber and rubber, but also palm oil, soya, cocoa, coffee um, and cattle and their derived products. Uh, compared to its predecessor, the EU Timber Regulation, which uh, addresses the legality of timber that is placed on the EU market, the EU um, uh, Deforestation Regulation uh, will expand by also addressing sustainability dimension. This also means that the Deforestation Regulation will eventually uh, repeal and replace um, the EU Timber 
um, regulation. Thank you. So how important is the deforestation regulation going to be globally? Well, the new regulation will have major global impacts. Uh, why is that? Because commodities and derived products in the scope of the regulation that cannot ensure the compliance with the regulation may be blocked from uh, entering or being sold on the EU market or exported from the EU market. Okay, so maybe let's talk some details now. What are the main elements of this regulation? So when the new rules um, enter into force, all commodities and derived products uh, in scope will be placed on or exported from the EU market if they are both deforestation free and legal. For the wood commodity, this means that they will need to be produced um, on land that was not subject to deforestation and forest degradation after 31st December 2020 and has been produced in accordance with the relevant legislation of the country of production. To confirm this, relevant products from supply chains will always need to be accompanied by a due diligence statement that will be submitted to an EU database known also as Register Information System. So this submission, it will confirm that due diligence was carried out? It will confirm this, uh, but also it will confirm that no or only negligible risk was found. Um, this submission of the statement should be made prior to placing relevant products on or exporting from the EU market. Uh, operators and traders have the obligation to exercise the due diligence, except in some cases, um, and share then the due diligence statement reference number along the supply chain. Uh, the new regulation will also establish a benchmarking system that will assess the risk of deforestation and forest degradation of countries. This risk level will also then impact the level of obligations for companies in their due diligence process. You mentioned due diligence. What are the key points that our viewers should really know about? So we can start off by mentioning that the due diligence procedure has been um, strengthened compared to the EU timber regulation. It consists of three elements that we are already aware of. Uh, first, information requirements, then risk assessment and uh, risk management. Um, and is complemented also by reporting uh, obligations. As part of the due diligence on the supply chains, companies will be required to collect precise geographical information about the source of the commodities. Here we refer to the plots of land um, described by means of latitude and longitude coordinates corresponding to at least one point and in case of more than four hectares they should be provided using polygons. Could you maybe give us an example of how this could work in practice? Definitely, um, so I will use the graphics that you will um, see here next to me um, and all the credits here go to the European Commission. Uh, this is one of the possible examples of a timber supply chain. So the forest owner um, will harvest trees and place them on the EU market at point of harvest. As an operator, forest owner will need to perform a due diligence, submit a due diligence statement and receive a due diligence statement reference number. Then logs will be sent to a sawmill for processing the sawmill will place the sawmill on the EU market. As a SME operator further down the supply chain, the sawmill will have no due diligence uh, obligations. Note that uh, EU deforestation regulation exempts SME operators from the obligation to exercise due diligence for relevant products contained in or made from the relevant a uh, product that have already undergone uh, the due diligence and for which a due diligence statement was already submitted. This operator will receive a due diligence statement reference number and make it available on demand. Next is a merchant who will buy from several sawmill and make some uh, wood available on the EU market. As SME trader, 
merchant will have no due diligence obligation, but an obligation to collect information. The merchant will receive a due diligence statement reference number. And here note that large traders that are not SMEs have same obligations as operators. Finally, a furniture maker will buy timber from several timber merchants and will need to ensure compliance of all wood used for the furniture. As an operator, the timber company will conduct a due diligence uh, check obligation, submit due diligence statement based on previous reference numbers and receive a due diligence uh, statement reference number and then the product uh, will be ready for export. Thank you, a very comprehensive example. Um, voluntary tools like PFC have had a support function in the EU timber regulation. Has this changed with the deforestation regulation? Um, no, it hasn't changed. So certification systems uh, remain a support tool, uh, but not as a green lane. Um, so direct compliance in this case, as a green lane. Uh, voluntary certification can be used as part of the due diligence process. Um, however, uh, the EU DR, sorry, so the EU deforestation regulation um, emphasizes that responsibility for compliance lies with the operator. Um, we hope that further in the process, the work done so far uh, by globally uh, voluntary uh, schemes like the PFC will be recognized and uh, taken into consideration in the assessment of the countries. Uh, so the benchmarking system, um, uh, multi-stakeholder participation and engagement, etc. Thank you. So to conclude our conversation together, let's have a look at the timeline. Um, do we know the key milestones? So um, you should see it here on the screen. The regulation can be anticipated to enter into force in May or June uh, this year and then into application around December 2024. Uh, six months later, um, it should go into application for small and medium-sized enterprises. Um, the EU timber regulation will be repealed in December 2024. However, it will still apply for another three years for wood products where trees were harvested before the um, deforestation regulation came into force and where the wood products um, uh, wood product is placed on EU market um, on or after the deforestation regulation becomes applicable. Maya, I would like to return to you uh, and conclude by identifying what will be key for a successful implementation of the deforestation regulation. Maybe I highlight three points here. Uh, first um, would be understanding the EU deforestation regulation and raising awareness of, on the requirements, um, on the impact and on the best solutions. Second would be uh, to have different tools that are relevant for the implementation um, in place in time. Uh, so we still uh, expect some um, implementation tools coming from the European Commission, be it guidance, documents, IT tools and so on, but also to have certification systems like ours uh, ready. And finally, I would say it will only count if we have um, everyone on board, so governments, um, smallholders, companies, different organizations um, and so on. Thank you. So we've had a lot of great information on this webinar today. Do you have any last concluding thoughts? I would just like to highlight that at PFC we are following this initiative, this very important initiative by the European Commission from day one um, and we will have uh, optimal sol solutions in place uh, for a timely implementation. Brilliant. Well, thank you Maya and also a big thank you for Torsten and Richard for joining us both today and of course Thank you all for joining us for our latest PFC webinar on the deforestation regulation. See you next time. <laughs>